Well, I got this box delivered and I'm going to do an unboxing for you. So hang on to your seats. G'day, welcome to Bootlosophy. And if you're new here, my name is Tech. I acknowledge the traditional custodians of the lands that I live and work on here in Perth in Western Australia, uh, the Wajuk people. Now, here's a box that's just arrived for me um, from NYX Handmade Boots. It's the uh, NYX Parkhurst collaboration. So let's do an unboxing. So uh, this is from NYX Handmade Boots. Um, it's the collaboration with Parkhurst using Parkhurst's 602 last, which they call an iconic last, which I agree with, by the way. Um, as usual, it comes in the fairly solid uh, external packaging. Um, and let's open it up and I'll tell you a little bit about the boots. So the first thing that strikes you, it's in Chrome Excel. Uh, which I chose because it was a quick ship from NYX Handmade Boots. So this is actually a uh, NYX Falcon boot uh, based on their Falcon model, except what they've done is instead of using their normal HNW last, um, they've used Parkhurst's 602 last to give it a slightly more snug fit and uh, uh, a sort of more almond-shaped toe, a dressier toe. It is, however, based on the H&W Moderate Arch uh, using the standard non-plain toe, non-cap non toe. Um, so my understanding is while they build it using Nick's normal traditional building methods on the H&W, uh, they're using the Parkhurst last in order to gain the shape and design of the uppers. So looking at this, what have we got? Obviously, two pairs of boots, and I'll take them out of the box. So they come with um, one pair of leather laces and NYX grease, which I believe is Obanoffs anyway. And that's always very useful for waterproofing and conditioning the boots. Let's take one boot at a time. Um, it's a stitch down construction, double row stitch down. You can see the, the handmade, I, I believe this is handmade stitching. Um, quite different from Weiberg's very closely uh, uh, stitched, uh, double stitch down um, method. Much more similar to, say, White's and much more traditional Pacific Northwest, to be honest. Uh, it's stitched down because the uppers are lasted and flared out, and you can see the uppers are stitched down onto the midsole. So there you get the midsole, and then the outsole is the Vibram V700 V-bar sole. Uh, a really nice sort of dressy sole, low profile, uh, and quite grippy. I have these on a number of my boots, including the classic uh, Chippewa service boots. One, two, three, four, four uh, bright brass eyelets, three uh, speed hooks and a, a brass eyelet at the top. Fully gusseted tongue. Uh, they're always fun to put on. You have to find a way to train them so that they um, don't cut into your, into your uh, ankles. And I think the S S fold is probably the best. From what I can see of the stitching, uh, quadruple stitch, triple stitch, some nice sort of decorative as well as um, structural stitching in the um, uh, back counter. Pull loop, same thick leather. This is, I think I said at the beginning, Horween's brown chrome XL, uh, which is offered as a quick ship. This was available, this collab boot, in uh, other leathers, including Wicket and Craig, but they were not quick ship, and I decided to get them quick ship. So um, a really nicely laid out boot. This is my second pair of NYX boots, uh, my first being a, a Robert, which I've already brought to you a review, and you can um, see that up there if you want to have a look. So the other boot surprisingly matches. <laughs> Um, but the quality is also matching. There's, I can't see anything wrong with it. In the other boot, I hadn't noticed until I picked it up, uh, two pairs of kilties, uh, one pair of kilties, two kilties, one each. Uh, also, from the smell and the look, uh, brown chrome XL. Um, 
the kilties are meant to protect this quite soft tongue. It's a different leather uh, from the sort of scratching that they might get uh, from the, the hardware. So that's quite a reasonable, uh, reasonably useful protective layer that you can put on. So the other boot, um, you know, the, the um, comparison is still the same. Uh, as I said, I I'm pretty sure this is hand stitching because you can see the variation in the, in the stitches and in the width of the stitches as it goes around the stitch down uh, constructed front foot. It's a block heel uh, with a quare bog um, heel topper. Uh, natural uh, 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 layers of natural leather there on the heel, uh, veg tanned uh, midsole, making this, I think, a, a quite a sturdy boot to break in. So that's going to be quite interesting in the break in period. Uh, I said that this was a quick ship. Um, I ordered this in on the 5th of May 2023. I got an email that said that the um, construction had started on the 23rd of July, 2023. That was about 11 weeks after ordering. Uh, I got an email that they shipped on the 3rd of August, 2023. So that's roughly two weeks from, from uh, uh, start of manufacture. Uh, and then I received them on the 16th of August. And it took about two weeks to ship to me. So overall, 15 weeks for a quick ship. <laughs> um, I'm glad I didn't order Wicket and Craig, uh, which would have taken longer. All right, so all that's left now is I, I'll uh, try them on foot and we'll see what they look like and how they feel. So um, this is Editor Tech deciding to jump into an interregnum uh, between the unboxing and uh, before you see the on feet, because I've been wearing uh, these for a couple of days and I thought I would bring you, uh, just before I show you the on feet footage, um, my initial thoughts about wearing them. So, um, as I said, I won't worn them for a couple of days. The first day was basically in my office. So, um, I'm not entirely sure you, you sort of even nominate that as wear, but I did have them on for eight hours. Um, they were what you'd expect new boots to be, um, quite snug and, um, fairly firm and, and, and stiff almost, I'd say. Um, I think that's kind of what you would expect new boots to be. Um, but at the same time, uh, comfortable. You know, they, they wrapped around my feet. And that is, I think, uh, a large part due to the 602 last from Parkhurst uh, being very suitable to my feet. And I love that 602 last, the way it, it uh, grips the heel, uh, opens out at the, uh, at the forefoot, uh, and then gives me a lot of room in, in, the, in the toe. Uh, the only thing I'd say about these is it's, it feels and looks aesthetically a little longer than a Parkhurst boot. Um, and I think that's because of the, the way that the um, Parkhurst 602 last is built on top of an HNW last, which is a, a moderate arch, but it's still a higher arch than you would find in Parkhurst models. And I think what's meant to happen is as your feet settle into the arch, they sort of push open and, and further a little bit. And that means that apparent length isn't really length. It's just that my, my feet are kind of like that at the moment until it settles in. Um, the second day, uh, I went for an, uh, uh, would have been six and a half, seven kilometer walk. Don't get too excited. <laughs> uh, it was from my suburb into the next suburb uh, called Subiaco, uh, which has, has a bit of a shopping strip. So I basically walk from here to there and then uh, back again. And, and I think it's probably around seven, seven and a half kilometers. Uh, and then walking around uh, in the shops and in the park uh, on the way there and back, um, I had to sit down and look around and, you know, um, enjoyed nature. <laughs> um, so that gave me a better feel for how these felt. Okay, quick summary and feeling. Uh, they were snug. Um, they were a bit firm, but they opened up as they warmed up and as my feet warmed up. And as my feet expanded in the, in the warmth or heat, if you like, of walking around in a, on a sunny day, uh, they did not hurt. And I think the Chrome Excel extended 
along with uh, what my feet needed. So that was extremely comfortable. Uh, the arch, superb, absolutely superb. And this is, I think, the beauty of um, PNW makes uh, in my Vibergs and my uh, Whites. They're exceptional arch support. It's all built up with leathers. Uh, they shape that fiddle shape underneath. Uh, the leather uh, um, arch support is being built up through those layers and layers inside. Uh, and it's just absolute craftsmanship. So arch support, absolutely wonderful. And despite being a slightly higher arch than I'm, I'm used to, um, it, was, it was really very comfortable in, during the walk. Okay, so uh, first impressions of these. Very sturdy boot. It is Chrome Excel. Uh, I measured it at a little over three millimeters. So it's a heavy Chrome Excel. I mean, uh, the Allen Edmonds, uh, Higgins Mill, for example, in Chrome Excel, even the Aldens come in at about two millimeters. Uh, the Whites and the Vibergs came in at about 2.5 to 2.8 millimeters. So it's getting close to this, but this was a knockout. It was, it was three point something uh, millimeters. My, my, um, because of the lip, I couldn't get a very precise measurement, but taking an average uh, came to about 3.2, 3.3 millimeters. So that's a, that's a heavy uh, cut of Chrome Excel. Uh, despite the walking around, hardly any creasing at this stage. So the clicking is pretty good. There is no um, loose grain at all in the shaft, which is often where you might find it because they use a, a lesser cut up here than, than they do down there when you can, uh, where you can see it. Um, in terms of construction, I just I just think it's really superb. It's it's hand lasted, which is why you can see, um, you know, the high uh, sort of distance between each stitch. It's it's not a very very fine uh, stitch density per inch as you can get in the Vibergs. And I might just put up a photo just at this point to show you the difference in the in the stitching between the Vyberg uh, service boots and these. But I have no complaints. This is this is handmade. Um, the hardware was perfectly firm, at least in the, these last two days. Uh, nothing came apart. The Chrome Excel Kilty, it, it was an experience because this is also that same thickness leather. Um, so it did tend to cut into uh, my shin a little bit because it's it's just at that height where it sort of moves backwards and forwards between uh, the height of the tongue and, and itself. Uh, the tongue, folding it into an S shape, is also an experience. <laughs> and you do apparently have to train it to do that so that it starts to get more and more comfortable uh, the more you wear it. Pull loop, a little bit annoying. It's so stiff that it catches your, the cuff of your pants every single time. So you tend to have to wear uh, 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 wider pants, you know, straight legs rather than, than uh, uh, slimmer pants. But even with straight legs, as you sit down and then you stand up, the cuffs do get caught. A little annoying. What do you do? It's a, it's a modern world problem. Uh, the sole, Vibram uh, 700 V-bar sole, it's grippy on, on, on where I went, which is all pavement and concrete. Um, so no problems at all. Uh, comfortable. Uh, shock absorption was pretty good with uh, leather and cork. Actually, leather and leather. I, I'm not even sure they have any cork. I think it's all leather inside. Uh, and this this uh, Quabog, I don't know how you pronounce it, Quabog heel. Really nice. So overall, my first impressions is this is a sturdy boot. Love it. This is, this is what you wear to the end of the world. Uh, uh, which gives me an idea for a video. I might do a video about what you might wear top to bottom if the world ended. <laughs> we'll think about that one. Um, the aesthetic, I like it. It's a, it's a plain toe, what would you call it? A service boot or a work boot? I never know the difference between the two, you know, because service boots can be work boots, work boots can be service boots. Um, what would you call an Iron Ranger? A work boot, presumably, but doesn't it look like a service boot, you know? It, it's hard to tell. But I love this aesthetic. These are my favorite types of boots. I love Chelsea's. Um, but these are my favorite types of boots, so it fits perfectly. Chrome Excel in the brown, 
uh, is a little darker. And again, here I might put a little photograph of a comparison with some of my older Chrome Excels or with an older uh, Viberg service boot. And this one is darker. And in the sun, you do have you do pick up a little burgundy, I might call it. You know, there's a there's a little little flash of burgundy. Um, but I'm sure that as it as it wears and starts to fade in the sun, it will go browner. It's not a color eight. So there you go. I'll go back to the rest of the video that I uh, taped a bit earlier, which is the try on. Okay, so this feels like some hours later <laughs> because it took me that long to uh, put the laces in. Uh, but to remain genuine, I haven't put my feet in these yet. So you're going to actually witness um, the initial fitting. So these are in a size uh, 8D. That's my usual um, half size down from, from true Brannock size. The leather is stiff, as is the kilty. Uh, the laces are <laughs> long and stiff. And I'm finding it, um, you know, it needs to take a bit of strength to sort of get the laces through. I'm not going to bother putting them through the top knot, but I may do in, in real use. We shall see. So, the first feel is that it's quite a snug boot. Um, my 8D Nix Robert boot is a lot rounder in the toe. Uh, and although the 602 last from Parkhurst fits me really, really well, I think the 602 is probably my best fitting last out of all my boots uh, out of Parkhurst. These feel a little more snug. That might be because of the way they were lasted. You know, if, it, if it's done by hand, uh, the person who's doing the lasting may be pulling quite tightly. So it will initially feel quite tight. But as you probably know, um, Chrome XL is quite a forgiving leather and will stretch. It's not tight. It's just a bit more snug than it feels on my Parkhurst boots. Let's get the other one on. There's a, a pop as you put them in, much like um, how I imagine engineer boots might be, but certainly cowboy boots and some Chelsea's. Uh, I'm trying to snitch it, cinch it up quite tightly so that it starts to uh, relax the leather uh, in, on the uppers as well as stretch the leather uh, on the laces, although Heaven knows why they need stretching, they're that long. I'm not a fan of cutting my laces. I feel that, you know, whatever God gives you, you're supposed to use. So they do look quite uneven, don't they? <laughs> they look ridiculous. I may have to do something about them. Yeah, so the fit on both is the same. Uh, sometimes I do feel... The right foot is a lot tighter than the left, but in this case they feel the same. Uh, I was right about the solidness of the outsole and the midsole. It is quite hard to bend, but I'm pretty sure it will break in just fine. Uh, the quality of the construction I think is superb. It's and they're right, using the 602, it's a, it's a very dressy last. And with the quality of the Pacific Northwest build, this is a tough boot to beat. Let's walk around a bit and see how it feels. Yeah, it, it flexes reasonably well, um, moving around. It fits my foot. So walking around in it is really nice. I, I think break-in is not going to be terrible. Um, I'm getting a little heel slip, but that's purely because of the rigidity of the uh, soles for the moment. Once they 
uh, flex a little bit and learn where my foot flexes and they flex with my foot, it'll be fine. Okay, so let's wrap up. So there you have it. Um, my first impressions of the NYX Falcon boot built on the Parkhurst 602 last is pretty positive. Um, I think the construction quality is exactly what you'd expect from NYX handmade boots. Uh, really well made, uh, hand lasted, um, hand stitched where it counts. Uh, and obviously you can see the craftsman's hands as, as this has gone through machine stitching and so on. Um, super thick chrome Excel leather. Uh, lovely uh, pull up that's going to take place with this. It's a, it's a solid boot. You can hear it. Um, and the 602 last makes it quite a dressy uh, Pacific Northwest boot. Um, you know what? I, I think it's a close rival to the White's MP in my eyes and for the same sorts of uses. The use of the V-Bar uh, V700 Vibram sole is interesting because uh, it's, it's quite an urban uh, sole. I'm not sure this is fantastic for trekking out uh, uh, on muddy tracks and so on, but neither is day night. Uh, so my overall impressions, the fit is good, the aesthetic is, um, to my eyes, attractive, the quality is definitely there, uh, I'm looking forward to breaking these in. So um, uh, keep an eye on my channel and if you like this video, uh, don't forget to click on like and obviously if you're not subscribed already, I have no idea why you're not because I've got so many of these boot reviews to bring to you, click on subscribe down there. Um, until the next time. I bring you a couple of uh, reviews a week. Stay tuned, take care, and I'll see you soon.